question is from Joel Carnes 3. If I lift heavy, will it cause my joints to hurt over time? If so, is there any way to prevent it? Uh, yes and no. Okay, right. Yeah, yeah, it, yes, exactly. It really depends how you lift heavy, how good your mobility is. That being said... And how often. And, and how, how often you cycle out of yeah, it. Yeah, but that being said, if you're constantly testing, you're pushing your body, even if you do everything perfect, at some point, you know, a 180-pound guy squatting you know, 350 pounds or 400 pounds or deadlifting 500 pounds, that is a lot it's of weight. pressuring the hinges constantly. Yeah, so at some point, maybe, you know, you might, you, you, it might cause some joint pain, but the, the big bulk of whether or not it does or not has to do with your mobility and your technique. Right. That's really the most of well, it. Well, I think of it like, you know, get on your, <laughs> go in your house or your, your, your front door and then jump on the door and swing on it one time and it probably won't rip it off the hinges, but do that every fucking day for weeks on weeks on weeks and see what happens mm -hmm. eventually. You know, it's a, it's the same concept. Like, you know, and I think that most people, and we talk about this a lot. Like, I think we, we all love to lift heavy. Um, and I, I tend to stick in that phase longer than when I should. And the first sign of, I know I need to get out of it is the, the achy joints. It's like, once I start feeling totally. that, mm -hmm. um, or con feeling tight all the time, right. Like losing mobility, uh, I know that I've stayed in that phase too long. It's time for me to move out of it. So I think uh, as far as how long you can lift heavy, you, I think you could lift heavy for years and year forever if you learn to cycle in and out of it and give yourself that recovery. Yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely. And I think you, you'll hear the term like bullet, bulletproofing your joints or – uh, like I, I like to think of it as like fortifying like my joints. I want to I want to put the effort in to constantly have in my routine a plan to you know make sure I, I maintain the mobility and the strength around the joints to really then keep applying that type of you know demand and load and pressure uh, you know for my muscles to to respond to. So um, but yeah, you, you still have to weave in and out of it because you inevitably you're going to get to a point where you know you, you're really pressing outside. Uh, the limitations there and you know you, you don't always know what that looks like especially if you're really kind of grinding out like a, a super heavy load so yeah testing your max all the time would be where I, i'd say well we got to be careful but look i tell you what i trained a lot of older people for a long time i'd say at least for 10 years of my career i specialized in training people over the age of 60 and i had them do heavy phases and all of them got better joint mobility and better movement and felt better. This is true. You know, I'm talking about the guy or girl who pushes themselves to the point where they're hitting PRs and they're lifting a lot of weight on top of it. <laughs> then you got to be careful. Like once you reach a certain level of strength, yeah. then you got to, because when I look at, here's the deal. I take the average guy who's 180 pounds, 200 pounds, and I have them do a strength cycle. We might get up to, you know, 250 pound deadlifts or something like that, right? After years and years of training, like if you look at me, I've been working out for a long time. My heavy deadlifts are 500 plus pounds. If I make one small movement wrong in my deadlift with 500 pounds, the odds I'll hurt myself are higher than the dude that is still lifting heavy for himself, but it's only 250 pounds. That's a good point. So that's when it starts to kind of, you got to be careful. I'll use Doug, Doug as an as example. He hired me in, uh, in his 40s with back pain. It's actually the main reason why he hired me. We did, uh, and we did it properly, of course. We worked on, you know, getting his, building his body up the right way. But we had him deadlifting, you know, 350, close to 400 pounds. His back pain was gone, you know. So li lifting heavy in that case actually benefited uh, the pain and made him feel a lot better. Um, you just have to be smart, listen to your body. I think the problems from lifting heavy, aside from poor mobility, poor movement, poor technique, the problems come from always trying to beat your previous best. At least that's my case. Mm -hmm. if, if I ever hurt myself, it's not from lifting heavy. It's from trying to beat what I did before. That's when I start to get into trouble. It's like, all right, I know what my max was before. Let me see if I can beat this. And, and heavy is very relative to where you're at currently at totally, that moment, right? Totally. So like at heavy deadlifting right now for me is like in the four, low 400s. Low 400s, that's really heavy for me right <laughs> now. It's just I, not, I don't have the same strength as when I was pulling 550. So... You, you, I can't think about the 550. I can't go into this deadlift session like if I'm going to deadlift today, like which is on my on my calendar. If I go to deadlift today and I decide today is a heavy day, well, just because I was lifting well and in deep into the 400s doesn't mean that I, that'll be a heavy day for mm -hmm. me today. So learning to adjust where you're currently at for what's heavy, and I think some like it's a good point, Sal, because I think a lot of people 
compare, oh, this isn't that heavy for me. I've done way more than this. Well, it could mm-hmm. be very heavy for you right now if you yeah, haven't got great sleep. Yeah, you're doing the same muscle mass as you had on back then. So learning to adjust that is so important to also taking care of your joints. Yeah, and we just recently saw um, Dexter Jackson compete in the Arnold Classic. He got second place. He's in his 50s. Uh, he's the most winningest bodybuilder of all time. So he's a pro bodybuilder. Pro bodybuilders obviously are at a different level. They train themselves. This guy's in his mid fifties, no injuries, great movement, great mobility. But if you watch him, how he works out, he's very careful with his form and technique. Very different from Ronnie Coleman. Ronnie Coleman, one of the greatest bodybuilders of all time, did crazy things. Dare I say, stupid things. Uh, for the video where he squatted 800 pounds or deadlifted 800 pounds, and that poor guy is suffering quite a bit. And you can see this down the list of these bodybuilders. Vince Taylor, another guy, I believe he's in his 60s now. That guy competed into his 50s. He was also very careful with the way he lifted weights. And and all the people that I've ever worked out with or had work out in my gyms that were in their 60s, 70s, and even 80s with great fitness, they were just smart. You know what I mean? They weren't all yeah. they weren't testing themselves all the time. They were just very smart with how they worked out and. And their form of heavy lifting, which was smart, is what kept them away from pain, not the other way around. 